gave you two problems uh, to, to work on, one of which is really well set up to use the substitution method that we just talked about today to solve it, and the other one which is not. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the first one uh, and how we do substitution to solve this first system of two equations. There's one particular pitfall that I want to make sure we get a chance to talk about there. Um, and then if we have a minute or two left, uh, we'll talk about how number two isn't really set up for us to use substitution, but we could sort of force it if we wanted to. Um, number two is a better setup for the method we're going to learn next, uh, which is the method of elimination. Um, but let's look at the first one first. So what would I want to do here to apply the method of substitution to find a solution that works for both of these equations simultaneously? What was your first step in your strategy? What did you substitute, and where did you substitute it? Great. So this was already set up for substitution because one of our variables, the y, was already by itself in one of the equations. It was already solved explicitly for in terms of the other variable. So just like in the example we first looked at today, that lets us directly drop that expression, 3x minus 4, from the first equation in place of the y in the second equation. So anytime you're making a substitution, I always try to stress use parentheses when you make that substitution so that you don't end up breaking apart pieces of an expression that need to remain together. So that 3x and that minus 4 are attached to one another in the expression, y equals 3x minus 4, so they should go wherever the other goes. So when I substitute 3x minus 4, I'm going to do so inside a pair of parentheses. But as soon as I've done that, now I have an equation that no longer has y's in it, it only has x's, and I can solve this equation for x. I'm going to go through that algebra a little bit on the quick side, just so we can have some time to get forward to that next bit. 3 times 3x is going to give me 9x. 3 times negative 4 is going to give me minus 12. 4x plus 9x is going to give me 13x. And then to solve this equation, I'll just need to add 12 to both sides. It's going to give me a 39 on the right-hand side and a 13 on the left, 13x. And the last step then is to divide by 39, sorry, divide by 13. And I found a value for x. 39 divided by 13 happens to be 3. Um, but again, don't stop here. Right? In all of our linear equation problems earlier in the semester, we would stop at this point. We've solved the equation. But really, there's two equations in play. And those two equations have a solution which needs to specify the values of both x and y. So don't stop here. Instead, substitute this value back into either of our original equations, whichever one you think is going to be easier to work with, because they should both give us the same answer for y as long as we found the right x. Um, I'm going to choose the first equation, just because there's a little bit less going on. If I do that, then my first equation, y equals 3x minus 4, is going to now look like y equals 3 times 3 minus 4. That's nice because it only gives me arithmetic to do and leads me to y equals 5. And so your solution needs to specify both, x equals 3, y equals 5. If you have time, you can always substitute those values back into both of these two equations and verify that when x is 3 and y is 5, both of those original equations need to be satisfied. So there's a triumph of the substitution method again. And the, the one place that I wanted to spotlight here especially is when we made our substitution, we hugged the substitution with parentheses. That was a step that wasn't as important in the first example we looked at today. Um, but here it's very much important. Because if I didn't include those parentheses, then I might not have distributed the multiplication by 3 over into this negative 4. And instead of a minus 12 right here, I would have a minus 4. And so as you can, as you can expect, that would change our answer. So when you do that substitution, make sure that you hug the substitution with parentheses, always. Um, that'll give you that mental cue that reminds you to distribute multiplication over addition.